if you please turn off your cell phones. There are no cell phones in Cape Breton in the 1940s, or for many years after. Uh, and if you have any crinkly candies, this is the moment to turn around. Thank you so, so much, and please put your hands together for a big Cape Breton welcome for Harlan Steele. Thank you so much.
The war could be over by the time you get back. Assuming I ever come back. Well, what do you mean by that? Fine. We stay until the ship leaves the dock, but then we race home, you hear? Shh. Here they come. I guess they're all right. Or soldier boys. Oh, can't you just see me off in Europe with Uncle Bird? Fighting Germans? You're a little young. It's not fair. If I were your age, you still wouldn't be old enough. Besides, they don't let girls fight overseas. You could still help out, though. You could work at the plant. Steel plant is no place for girls. It is in wartime. They need girls so they can release some fine, strapping lad to go overseas. Some fine, strapping, young, handsome. You're drooling. Well, I don't see how you're not. It's your patriotic duty. To drool? To do your part. And be cooped up here even longer. No thanks. What do you mean? Jenny, I'm not going to Halifax. I'm going to Toronto. What? You can't tell Ma. Toronto? You can't tell Ma. How could you possibly afford that? I've been doing extra jobs for Mrs. McKinnon. Laundry, cleaning, whenever I was out studying. You mean you lied? I'm so sorry. I'm so proud of you. But why Toronto? Well, that's just a start. Then it's London and New York and Rome. That's a lot of laundry. I'm 17 years old and I've never been off of the island. I've never seen one thing that wasn't Cape Breton. But why now? We're at war. And what are we fighting for? Freedom. Well, I've been fighting for freedom my entire life. When the moon is in the gloaming, when the winter winds are laid, when I can't resist from roaming like the food sign along for when the stars are cold and hazy, when I can't just sit and wait, when the town is old and lazy, and I can't think straight, when the wind is Charlotte, go in the kitchen and help your auntie. Emma, I'm sorry. I... Now, 
Ma, I've got to get to that station. If the ship had left, the ship didn't leave because it received the same news I did. Vernon, your Uncle Vernon, he's gone. His unit was lost early this morning. I just received the message. Uncle Vernon? Ma, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you girls knew this, but since your father, since the accident, we depended on Uncle Vernon's paycheck. And now with him gone, I'm afraid there's gonna have to be some changes. <coughs> what kind of changes? We're gonna have to sell the house. No, Mom, you can't! No, I know, it's not what I want. Dad built this house for you. For us! I know, but with borrowed money and with a mortgage and five mouths to feed, I can't pay this on my own. No, you can't sell this place, Mom. It was his gift to you, your place, your lily pad. I know, there are other places. He built it with his own two hands. One that's left to take care of it. What good is a hand-carved banister when there's nothing to eat on the table? There is another option. What? Amelia, you're not going to like this because I know how hard you've worked to finish school and how eager you are to abandon us to the mainland. That's not. But Mrs. McCready dropped by today when she heard the news. And while well, she's looking for a girl to work in her shop. A shop? Yeah, you could start tomorrow. Would that make a difference? Well, it would help a bit, but with you working here, we could pay the mortgage off for maybe months? Years. But if I help Mrs. McCready, I can work at a shop. No, you need to finish school. School is for rock balls. Jenny, don't talk like that. You sound like a scarlet woman. Amelia, this is the only way. But a shop! Look, it's $8 a week. There's nowhere else you could do better than that. It's enough to scrape by. How much do you reckon they pay those girls who work at the steel plant? A lot! Cindy Nathanson said it was a lot. She is rich. Even an office job is 16 a week. 16? Oh, you're not working at no steel plant. Why not? If the pay is better. Because you're a lady and not a common thumb. Wear a scotch. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the kind of people that work at that steel plant? They just make steel. No, I know the kind of people that work at that steel plant. It's unwomanly and it's unsafe. But the office, safe as a shop and double the pay. And surrounded by men. Good men, like Dad. Your father hated every second of that plant. It's dirty, vulgar, dangerous. Mom! I already lost my father and my brother. I am not losing you, too. I've got to get out of here. Don't make me work at a shop. If you get an interview... Deal! For an office job, we'll talk. I can't talk. But Mr. O'Toole. Ah, 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 ah. No, this is my office. Not that you do it. So scram, make pay. I will, just as soon as you take my application. And I can tell you again that an application is just about as useful as a trapdoor on a dinghy. But you're the super in charge of hiring new girls, ain't you? Does the chicken have legs? <coughs> no. Yes? <laughs> Looking at you. You're a pretty girl, but it's pretty clear the elevator don't go to the top floor. We're not hiring. But Cindy Nathanson said you were. Oh, oh, Cindy Nathanson said we were? Well, then since Cindy Nathanson said we One thing, is Cindy Nathanson the super in charge of hiring? No. <coughs> no! Now look, you're either deaf or thick as a Christmas morning log. So let me put this in the simplest of simplest terms for you. We don't hire! Go away! Why take those girls and not me? We had over 300 applications. On Thursday, there are 12 interviews. We're only taking five girls. It's not my fault. We don't have any spots left. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Whitney said to give you this. I have one spot left. I'll see you on Thursday. Uh, you did that on purpose, didn't you? You're nothing but a big fat bully. Sister, if shoes were clues, you'd be barefoot. Look, I've got my high school, which is more than I can say for most girls. Oh, isn't that lovely? Go tell your mother. And I score high in mathematics and chemistry. I don't care if you score high in honky tonk hay rolling and can bake a cranberry souffle while doing the high and fling. I'm not hiring you. There must be something I can do. Let's review. Barge into my office, refuse to leave. Call me names, insult me. Give me one good reason why I should hire you. My father was Billy McPherson. He worked at this plant for 23 years and he died in the coke ovens. I have three younger sisters. 
Please. I know Billy. Good man. And what about his daughter mucking around the plant? I'll do anything. It'll take a bloody miracle. You know, if you continue to come keep such late hours, I'm going to have to start asking you to lock up the place. I'm so sorry, Reverend. If I'm keeping you... It's fine. You must have a sweetheart overseas. Oh, no. I'm... Oh, gosh, no. Nothing like that. What troubles you? I... I should go. It sounds so silly. Nothing wrong with a thankful heart is silly. But yes, it is, compared to what... I should go. It's just a job. Work at the steel plant. They're hiring new girls, and they won't hire me. I just thought, at least an interview. I told you it was silly. It's not, not silly at all. You're uh, Maureen McPherson's daughter? One of them. How are your sisters? Fine, then. Thank you. There's three of you? Four. Of course. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but if you ask me, there's nothing silly about hungry children. I'm sure you'd make a fine addition to the plant. Perhaps there's something I can do. I have a special relationship with the man upstairs. You mean God? No, the chief of staff. <laughs> we, uh, we play poker every week. I'll tell him to give you an interview or else he's not getting that jar of New Waterford sausages I own. Do you really do that? I don't know what to say. You say thank you, but uh, not to me. Thank you. I'll see what I can do. Great! I'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, what? Wednesday? After the poker game on Tuesday. I didn't tell you the poker game was on Tuesday. You did it? Oh gosh, it must have been divine intervention. I had a feeling this meeting wasn't by chance. He said I had to know somebody. And I might not know somebody, but I know somebody who knows a lot of somebodies. Your Aunt Beth. She said you'd help. Will you? What good am I if I can't do a little bit when I can? And in this case, I can. Thank you! Thank you! Uh, I can only promise you an interview. The rest is up to you. Congratulations! You made it to the final round! Only the best and brightest will be taken on for full-time employment. Only the best and the brightest. Let's begin. George McDougall, Ethel Jones, Scotty Zabransky, Hey, Brian. English Canadian, Irish Acadian, Polish Ukrainian, Scotch.
Well, I'll start back, Isaac. Hi, Jenny. What you doing? I'm catching frogs. I don't see any frogs. Well, I haven't caught any yet. Well, why not? I'm not very good at frog catching, I guess. <laughs> Let's be careful. Frog catching out here all by yourself might catch a wood nymph instead. A what? A wood nymph. A nymph lives in the woods. Don't tell me you've never heard of a wood nymph. Oh, go on. Poor Walter McIsaac's never heard of a wood nymph. That's the shortest way to catch a wood nymph. Of course, maybe that's your aim all along, eh? A wood nymph is a magical being that lives... Are you that dim? In the wood? Exactly that. But <laughs> she's a lonely soul with the soul she is. For whenever she stumbles upon a group of two or three or more out in the lonely wood, she becomes invisible to the eye and deaf to the ear. Or rather, they become deaf to her ear, or every part of her, really. If you're going to go on with it, would you mind doing so quickly? But I'm just getting the best part. See, she roams about the woodland, lonely as God and wanting a sin. The only way she can be made seen is if mayhaps, by chance, she stumbles upon one lone soul, like herself, in the wood. Not groups, nor pairs, but one lone boy, then, only he can see her. Of course there's one thing, should she be made seen. The most terrible thing of all. What? She's not wearing any clothing! Oh, Jenny, the first one, would you go on with John? You want me to go on? It's no kind of story for a girl to be telling. Well, why not? It's a good story, isn't it? No. Besides. <laughs> Besides what? Besides. You're scaring away all the frogs. I definitely scared away one frog. Oh, why do you say things like that, Jenny? You know you shouldn't. Says who? The Bible, for one. Walter McIsaac. Where in the Bible does it say one thing about wood nymphs? I was just telling a story. Well, don't. It's too bold. <laughs> Are you saying I'm not bold? No. You're saying I'm not allowed to be bold. Yes. You're saying I'm not allowed to be bold because I'm a girl? No. I mean... Yeah. Lots of girls are bold, Walter like Isaac. Look at all the brave women and girls who are going to work in the steel pit. Are you saying I can't be bold like that? No. You're saying I don't have the nerve to risk a life in the limb down in the coke ovens so that our boys can sleep sadly knowing that their steel is solid? What are we even talking well, about? Well, I'll show you all. Show them all! They say I'm too young. Well, I say they're too old. They think they're better than us. Well, I say, ha, 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 ha. When my bold face touched your bold face, oh, Walter McCarthy, I could just kiss you! <laughs> what was that? Oh, that was your father's story. 
He wrote it for you. Please! I think you should tell it too. I, I don't think I can remember it. Yes, you do. The little woman that lives on a lily pad. The little magical woman that lives with us at the field mouse and they fall in love. Don't spoil it. Oh, tell us, Bob. Try to remember it. Lived in a pond, lived in a pond of pad. LP lived on Lily Pad Pond. What a nice patch he had. LP
Madam Dearest Roy. And what's your name, little lady? Dorothy Nebransky. Bransky? You're not a Bolshevik, are you? Look, we don't want any trouble. Oh, believe me, it's no trouble. What's going on? I'll call the super. Oh, that new lady super? Oh, please do. She's my aunt. Oh, hey, Nancy. Come on, Lauren. Let's get to work. Ah, just have fun. I can fight. Oh, this crazy screw wants a rat's I'm serious, I'll scream. Oh, baby, I'm counting on it. Hey, bring off, ship it! <laughs> Look at this one, she's got the mouth of a man. I like that. Yeah, I bet you do. Oh, the tongue of a man, too. What else she's got? Heck, a lot more than you got, I can tell you that right now. You want to fight me, Whistlebait? Yeah, maybe I do. Skirts come in here thinking you can take a man's job. At least this one looks like a man. Hey, come on. Only hire dog faced bronze around here, anyways. You okay? Yeah, I... Thanks. What was that about? Are you girls all right? We're fine. Are we? We are now. Thank you. I, I was worried, but I guess you had everything under control. Yeah, we did. Cool your jets. This is my fiance, Olivia. Amelia. Georgie. I'm Kay. Is <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, I, uh, I sell everything from the top of the crane. I ran as fast as I could. Is this the way things always run around here? Well, there, are, there will always be cul de port like the way. What's cul de port? Pigs, <laughs> Are you girls all right? Miss Jones? Someone said that there was trouble. Everything's fine. Yeah, just a couple of cul de ports. <laughs> Amelia! Miss Jones, what are you doing here? Same thing as you, I expect. There's a war on handy money. Everyone needs some extra cash. I guess I just never thought of teachers as needing money. Well, neither does the school board. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first day. They put me in charge of fractional distillation. The process of separating, you know, oil from tar and coal byproducts based on boiling temperature. I work in the coke ovens. Oh. Oh. I should get back to my I'm still on top of the clock. Oh, cool. Okay. He of rock? Acadian. Seems like a swell guy. He ships out tomorrow. Mm. Ah, we should get going too. Ship's about to start. Where he's headed? To the office on Lot 5. Oh, Amelia, you're working in the office. The glamorous life. Good to see you, Mrs. Jones. Oh, Amelia, we're not at school. Call me Ethel. Troublemaker. 
depending on who you ask. I wasn't asking. Come on, it's time to get you home. Your mother's going to be worried sick. My mother thinks I'm in school. Well, then, that is where we're headed. Why? So I can learn cooking and cleaning while the boys have adventures? Well, if you don't think cooking is an adventure, then you haven't tasted my collar over at town. It's not fair. Just because the women before me were stuck at home doesn't mean I can't have sky. Now when there's work to be done, good work, and I can do it. But the plant, it's a dangerous place. It's dangerous everywhere for a woman. Plenty dangerous at home. You're right about that. Felix. My name is Felix. Felix. You take her up. What? Well, you want a job, don't you? Yes. You know, they say a woman can never operate this crane. But you and me, we're going to prove them all wrong. But I've never operated a crane before. Oh, it's easy. You just press up. <laughs> top drawer, and the red folders go in the bottom drawer, and the yellow and green folders go in the middle drawer, and am I boring you, Mr. Person? Oh, no, sir. Good. Because the second I ship out tomorrow, you're going to find yourself as busy as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Understand? Yes, Mr. O'Toole. Mr. O'Toole was my father's name. Call me Jinx. Yes, sir. Now, where was I? Um, you were talking about your drawers. <laughs> and that's another thing. When I get back here, I don't care if it's been a month, I don't care if it's been two months, I don't care if it's been a bloody decade, and Christ himself has come back to greet us. Don't you touch nothing in my office, and make sure as hell nothing in my office touches you. When I get back, I want to see this just the way I left it. Immaculate. <laughs> Understand? He mapped to lot. Canada's position as a steel maker is now something more than strong. It's vulnerable. Unless you ladies muck it up. I don't want to get back here and find clotheslines on the coal lines or <laughs> cooked onions in the coke ovens or bloomers all over. Anything. What? You should have said anything. When you said, don't touch nothing, well, that's a double negative. It means the opposite. So if you wanted me to, don't touch nothing, that means I have to go around and touch everything, which may be impossible, or really, really hard. Anyway, you can't go cooking your onions in the coke ovens anyway. Look, you want your pan as sizzling as a sinner in Sunday school, or hot as a hair. Did I ask your opinion? It wasn't an opinion. Did I? No, Mr. O'Toole. Mr. O'Toole, she says. <laughs> By jingo, are you deaf, woman? I swear, the beanie's on, but the propeller ain't twirling. <laughs> Did I not just tell you to call me Jinx? <laughs> See what I just did there? <laughs> think you're right cute, don't you? Oh, no, sir. Good. Because you're not. No, no, no. Not your big blue eyes or your dimples on your cheeks. <laughs> or your jittery as a June bug, bright eyed and bushy tail. And... What was I talking about? <laughs> uh -uh. My bushy tail. Before that, <laughs> your drawers. Would you stop? <laughs> stop bringing up my drawers. My drawers are fine just the way they are. There's one thing I want you to take away from this. It's my drawers. It's, <laughs> it's that my drawers are fantastic. It's, it's that my drawers are fantastic and they don't need to be touched. It,
They're creatures from another world. It looks dangerous. Well, that's why they paid up the big bucks. No?
things. That's a lot of bad things. He usually is. How does he know so much? Well, you see, he's French, and the whole language is based on nothing. So. And how do you know so much? Well, I'm from Newfoundland, and nothing is all we have. <laughs>
I was born on an Irish morn, far, far away. The mother laughed until she cried, the other one nearly up and died. They'd never seen anyone's court so tight, deeply in a The other one clapped his hands and sighed, by jingle, by
will help. Okay. He didn't start beating it right there, did he? Good 
night, Mrs. McPherson. Uh. <laughs> I don't want you hanging around with those girls anymore. They're my friends. They're bad influences. I don't know what kind of depravity goes on at that office, but I don't want it home. It's just blowing off steam. Georgie may talk big, but she's harmless. Oh, in front of Jenny, too. She's here trying to get her homework done. And you're socializing with hoodlums. There's nothing wrong with a little swearing. It's a sin, Amelia. Where in the Bible does it say anything about swearing? Thou shalt not take the name, the, the Lord's name, in vain. Well, no one's taking anything in vain. We're just saying shite. <gasps> Amelia, clean of most clean of spirit. But who decided that? Those words didn't even exist when the Bible was written. It's not civilized. Well, maybe that's the problem with this place. It's a little too civilized. See, that's exactly why I didn't want you working at that inferno of a plant. Nothing but immoral men, corrupt women, oh, to say nothing of the physical dangers. Ma, I've been working there for six months. I think I'd know by now if my job was dangerous, and it's not. <laughs> Get on with it! 
gentlemen of the Sydney Steel Plant, please put your hands together for a warm welcome for Amelia, Dottie, Georgie, Ethel, and Kay, the Sydney Steel Sweeters!
Geico for the Planet Talent Contest, you should sign up. Oh, boy, that's some show you girlies put on. <laughs> Wasn't it, Troy? Oh, I'll say. Hey, uh, how's about you do it again for us, but without the trousers this time? <laughs> Close your face and get the hell out of here! <laughs> well, that was a look that needs suspenders. She was right, Spell. You were terrific. Thanks. It was surprisingly fun. You should really think about that talent contest. You'd be a real knockout. It doesn't sound very modest. <sighs> Who needs to be modest? You're great. It's like the book, the good book says, don't hide your light in a bush. And besides that, it's a big cash prize. You go a long way towards that mortgage. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs>
They say they don't even wear balloons. You know who else doesn't wear bloomers? Angus McAllister in a kilt. <laughs> we should sit in the front row. We should sit at the pub. Ow! Say, these battery packs have been running awful hot lately. They're fine. They'll be fine. I guess, as long as you check the valve. Yeah, as long as you check the valve. Yep. Wait, what? What? As long as you check the valve. Yeah, as long as you check the valve. I didn't check the valve. Did you check the valve? I didn't check the valve. Why didn't you check the valve? It's not my job to check the valve. Yes, it is. You were supposed to be checking it this whole time. Really? Yes. I'm sure it's fine. Are you? What's the worst that can happen? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Your little dress could just fall right off. Oh, with a valve. <laughs> oh, right. That's the worst.
your father would be so ashamed. Oh! What's going on? Okay, go, go, go. Okay, just leave this place. It's dangerous. Okay, everybody just keep calm. Don't panic. They would have the rooms under control. It's a good thing that we're all here and nobody's left inside the grave. Where's Felix? Oh, Felix was on that train. Jenny? Okay, okay, listen. Again, don't panic. It's just a small little minor infraction with the overheated valve. Everything is... Oh! See, 
I heard a different story about a fire and explosions and a man trapped in flames, afraid for his life, all alone in the smoke and <laughs> the dust and the ashes, until a little lost soul darted into the steel. But it wasn't someone who wouldn't have not seen a bird, just some girl, one bold girl. Yeah, yeah. 
It's not like we didn't know this was coming. It was always the deal. Are they keeping anyone on? Yeah, Bergabet Gillis and Minnie Perouche. And Peggy Wilco. Ugh, probably others. You gonna miss it? No. I am. Well, I came because someone needed to take Olivier's place. Now he's back. It's his job. It was his before. It'd be different, maybe, if it was someone else. But it's his, and he earned it. I'm just glad he's back. It uh, would have been nice to have asked. Not me. No? No. I would stay here another minute if they begged. Oh, you know, we can certainly fill in with his knees. So well, we're not capable, but I'm done. It's the man's job. I wouldn't want to spend the rest of my life here, that's for sure. That is manure. That is absolute bull. Puppy. Okay. I'm sorry, but that is absolutely wrong, and you know it. You know it. You loved it, and you were good at it. We all
Go now. Abandon us. It's what you always wanted. Things change. People change. You're not losing me. I already lost you. Then let's change that. You're leaving. I'll be back. No, you won't. I once saw a seagull on Whitney Pier shore. She walked in adventure, she wanted to soar. She flew far away from Cape Breton to Brain. I never thought I'd see her again. But the seagull comes back, it flies to the sea. It flies to the water, it flies back to me. It flies o'er the country to find brighter skies. But the seagull keeps coming. Oh, shite. <laughs>